Welcome. Tonight, in continuing our discussion and learning about Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noach, I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects, actually. I, I really enjoy all talking about Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noach and learning it and learning the Torah of it. But there's one that's, I think, ex- especially invigorating, which is talking about tefillah. And eventually what I want to get to is a concept of what tefillah is, what is the obligation of a non-Jew to daven, and what kind of siddur could they daven from, and so forth, and we'll get to that. But first I want to talk about the siddur in davening in relation to ourselves as the people that are meant to be teaching the nations of the world how to be chassidei umas ha'ilam. So the first question is, what are we, um, is there anything in our davening that we're saying every day that relates to this? And yes, very, very much so. And I think it's really uh, could die to take a few minutes to look at that because what that will do is give us an insight to the centrality of the effect that we're meant to be having on the nations of the world in Yiddishkeit, that this is the whole central point of what we're supposed to be doing. The tachlis, the ultimate completion of our service in the world is that the nations of the world are going to be serving Hashem. Now, your first question to me is, well, where do we see this in davening? And so I actually want to go through the davening in a, in a, uh, in a, from the very beginning. But I'll just give you a little hint, which is that the very first words of davening in uh, Nusachari and Nusach Svard is we say, The very first thing that we are saying in davening is that we are granting acknowledgement to the Lord, call out in his name, and express and acknowledge his wonders and his praises among the nations that's the very first thing we say in the formal part of davening after we've done our preparation and if we go to the end of davening the very last thing that we say in the formal part of davening in the siddur is that we say aleinu aleinu is a tefillah that uh we are meant to stop whatever we're doing to say Lena with the congregation. <speaking in Hebrew> is the ending of all our davening. The formal part of davening is this uh, 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 recognition and tefillah and statement that in the end of all times, it's going to come to be that God will be the king over the entire world. On that day, he will be one and his name will be one. And so we see that the beginning of our tefillah as a yid and the end of our tefillah as a yid is based on the concept of the change in the world and the, bringing the praise of Hashem to the entire world. Now, let's go to the beginning of davening. And we see that we start the davening after brochas, we start with Harani Makabalai, and then we say, So I'd like to suggest that there's five general types of tefillahs. And the, it's important to understand these five types because later on, when we have to consider the question, well, what if a, if a non-Jew was uh, Hasid Umas Elam was to want to daven, and uh, he asked for a siddur, well, what parts of davening would apply to him? So there are five types, and maybe other people have other ways of dividing these, but I would uh, suggest this is a, a simple way to look at it. One is talking about the greatness of Hashem above the created order of things. Um, not in, ter- in regards to a specific creation, but rather in regards to Hashem as a whole. Uh, there's the tefillahs about Hashem in relationship to B'nai Yisrael. So Hashem's kindness to us, what he did for the, the Jewish people. There's tefillahs that are about me and my relationship to Hashem and how Hashem has helped me. There are tefillahs, there's prayers that relate to Hashem and the nations. So how God interacts with the nations and God's relationship with the nations. And then there is the um, tefillahs and the prayers that relate to all of creation and their relationship among the nations. So uh, an example of these five is one is Adon Elom, saying God is the, the master of the entire universe. That would be a prayer just talking about the greatness of Hashem. 
Um, B'nai Yisrael would be uh, talking about how Hashem has saved us, so Hashem has taken us out of Egypt. Those are prayers related to specifically the Jewish people. Me, Hashem has helped me, Hashem is my, um, uh, Hashem is my guide, Hashem is my shepherd. That's a personal uh, experience that I'm having relating to my own personal individual experience. With the nations would be, um, the passage that we just read, call out to the nations, the nations should recognize Hashem. That's actually combining the two because it's about really the three. This is about me as part of the Jewish people causing the nations to call out, but it relates to the nations. And then with creation, so that would be a Pusik that says the trees were rejoicing and the mountains uh, um, danced. So w- this, I think, is helpful to see this. And one of the fascinating uh, ideas in tefillah is when we, when we pay attention to this, we'll see that tefillah moves fluidly between these five aspects of tefillah constantly. Even sometimes in the middle of a parak of Tehillim, or in the middle of a tefillah, all of a sudden it will shift from talking about um, the nations to the Jewish people to creation to Bnei Israel to me, and that is just a constant fluid process. And I think it's fascinating to look at that, and it's actually interesting to see the, the that the flow and and to learn things from the particular timing of that flow. But that's not something that we can deal right now. But uh, we can start with obviously the brachas that we say in the morning are proclaiming Hashem as the one who is giving wisdom to mankind and so forth. And he's given us wisdom and he's opening our eyes and so forth. And specific things that are more related to me personally, restoring my soul, the parts of my body and, uh, and so forth. And asking specific feelers that I should be successful through the day. And then of course there's brought because which is related to uh, the, the concept of thanking Hashem for the gift of his divine wisdom that he's given me. And he's given all B'nai Yisrael. Um, and, and also, it's, it's, the Torah is meant to be, there's massive portions of the Torah that are shaykh to the nations of the world. And it's also a gift for all of humanity in that way, through the through Matan Torah, the Moshe Rabbeinu and Matan Torah. Okay, so, Let's go. So we finish and start saying Matov Elehe Yaakov, which is still, which is as talking about the Jewish people. Then the next Pusik talks about me. My, I'm going to come to your house. I will bow down and I will uh, prostrate myself and I will serve uh, in, in your uh, holy um, Hegel. And it talks about my prayer. So that's a, talking about me. And then it goes to say, Adon Ilom. Now it's talking about the entire universe, the creator of the entire universe. And it goes through many different um, explanations of Hashem's greatness and unlimitedness, but then brings it down to an extremely personal level about me. It says, I'm, I'm putting my, uh, my soul in his hand, into Hashem's hand, and I have nothing to be afraid of. Of course, this, I'm... I'm going through this in the briefest form, but you can look inside and see in much detail the words and so forth. Okay, then we go on to the story of the Akeda, which is a story of, of the whole explanation of Hashem's relationship with Avram Avinu, our, our father, and um, many different amazing um, points over here, and the blessing that's going to come to the Jewish people as a whole. So then the tefillahs continue and says that uh, it's talking really about the Jewish people, that it's not on our own merits and so forth, that we are going to, um, um, that we, we merit all this, but rather Hashem is so great and so forth. And, and, and compared to us in our nothingness, Hashem is so great. Now, I'm going too fast because I forgot to mention something very important. So after, in the Akedah itself, we have a, a tefillah, a prayer that we say before, repeating the portions of the Torah that was tell the story of the binding of Isaac on um, Har Maria. And afterward, there's also a prayer. Now, if you pay close attention over there, after we've described the special uh, merit of Avram Avinu and Yitzhak for what they did, and the fact that uh, the Jewish people are blessed as a result of this. So this tefillah that we say afterwards ends with the following uh, Pasuk. 
ונאמר, והביאסם על הקודשי, ושמחתי בבייס תפילוסי, אלי סכם וזבחכם לזאת, לרצון על מזבור בכי, כי הבייסי בייס תפילות עיקר לכל העונים. So this is a פסק from a verse of Mishael, from chapter 56, verse 7. And it says that my house of prayer, meaning the temple, the holy temple in Jerusalem, the base of Mikdash, is a house of prayer for all the nations of the world. And it's fascinating that that's something that gets repeated again and again, all through Slichas. This is repeated again and again. And we'll see other amazing times that this concept is brought up. But the point I want to bring out over here is even in the tefillahs, when we're saying something related to us as the Jewish people, that at the end, the Chachamim, our sages, took that and showed that that's all for the purpose of bringing about this state of being of the universe and of the world where all the nations of the world are going to recognize Hashem. That the base of Mikdash is going to be recognized as the house of prayer for all the nations. So I think that's a really fascinating fundamental point over here to recognize the context of this. The context of these context of this is as this closing of the prayer after saying the Ikeda is the recognition of the centrality of the fact that there will be a base of Mikdash and all the nations of the world are going to see that as God's house of prayer for all the nations. Now um, then it, it continues with uh, some which is very much focused on the Jewish people and the special relationship with the Jewish people as with the covenant with God and the congregation of, of the children of Jacob. And then we go on to um, talk about our obligation to praise Hashem and be grateful to Hashem and proclaim Hashem's oneness. And then it goes back to talking about Hashem in this in the unlimited sense as the, the creator of the world beyond the world, that you created the world, Hashem. Uh, you were before the world was created. You are, since the world has been created, you're, all, you're eternal and so forth. Speaking about Hashem in this very, um, in, in the greatness of Hashem, way beyond the world. And also says, Whoever is going to sanctify Hashem's name in, in public, meaning to say to bring about the awareness and knowledge of God in the world. That's the real, that's what it means. Uh, is to bring about the knowledge and sanctification of the name of Hashem that the nations of the world see and say, wow, this is really special. And through the example of God's people, then serve, choose to serve God. Then, Going further on page 18, it um, continues to talk about, again about Hashem's greatness and how he's the first and so forth. He's the last. There's nothing besides him. And as goes from that to talking about us, the Jewish people, gathering us from the four corners of the world. But it's in the context of faultless and follow carefully. Um, Collect all the people that yearn for Hashem from the four corners of the world. That all the, they will recognize and know you, all the um, inhabitants of the world are going to know you, Hashem. That you, that you are the sole king over the entire world. So this is what we're talking about here. We're now we're talking about the nations of the world are meant to be uh, recognizing Hashem this is the very, this, we're still in the very beginning in the preliminaries of our, our prayers in the morning. And we're talking about this, the centrality of this, that the nations are going to recognize Hashem. And then it goes back to the, to the create, you know, the Hashem beyond the all powerful that he created the heavens and the earth. And uh, you're responsible for everything that was created above and below. And then it says, asking for Hashem to be kind and merciful with us. And then you should uh, fulfill the promise that's brought in Tzfanya, your, your prophet. Like it says, That returning all the Jewish people in 
to our the land of Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, is going to be a great, great praise for Hashem among all the nations of the world. So again, we're talking here, we're not just praying for something for our benefit. Of course, we'd all like to see the temple built and we'd like to see that we'd be able to return to the Holy Land. This is all for the purpose of bringing about the recognition of Hashem in the world, that the nations of the world are going to praise Hashem and be, and be grateful to Hashem and recognize Hashem, that He has created a temple for all of humanity, and he, then the act of bringing the Jewish people back to the land of Israel is something that's going to raise God's awareness and the awareness of God in the nations of the world. Incredible, incredible to see that this is what our tefillahs, this is what our tefillahs are emphasizing. Then it goes to the Korbanas, which is the Aveda of the um, sacrifices. And I'm sure that uh, anyone who spends some time looking at this can find even more points than I can possibly bring in this very, very short time. Um, Okay, then we finish the preparations for davening with the prayer that the temple should be built. Now, we start Kaddish. And we can make a whole time on just on Kaddish, but the basic concept of Kaddish, Yiskadal Vizkadash Shmei Rabo, is talking about the greatness of Hashem's name, how Hashem's name is going to be um, increased measurably and sanctified measurably. This is talking about in the, in the eyes of the nations of the world. This is the, the, based on, on the, the Psukim and the Nevim that is talking about that the greatness of Hashem's name, Hashem's name is going to be glorified in the enti entire world. This is what we're davening for. The entire Kaddish is really about the coming of the Geula, the coming of Mashiach. And that's something that we have to remember, that, that what we're davening for here is the greatness of Hashem's name, which comes through the nations of the world recognizing Hashem. And it's very interesting that when we get to Tachnan, we'll see that a lot of what we're saying in Tachnan, asking Hashem for compassion upon us, forgiveness and compassion is specifically revolving around the desecration of Hashem's name that comes from it not being obvious that Hashem's name is called upon us because we seem to be um, left to the wiles of <coughs> people who are, are not kindly disposed to God and to his people. So, the treatment of the Jewish people, the, the well-being of the Jewish people is something that sanctifies God's name in the world. And that if, the, God forbid, the Jewish people are not well-treated, we are telling God, don't let this happen to us because it brings a disgrace to your name. We're the people that committed to you and you following through and taking care of us and, and, and helping us be upright and being the teachers that we're meant to be is the greatest sanctification of God's name that could possibly be. And we're meant to do that sanctification as living people. The, the, the concept of a person who, as Meser, you know, uh, is, is uh, sanctified, Al Kiddush Hashem dies, Al Kiddush Hashem, he dies to sanctify God's name, brings about a sanctification of God's name. But how much more so would we be able to change the world through being sanctifying God's name through the way we live our lives and through the way we affect people and the way we. Um, be mishpia, while the way that we are, are persuasive with the nations of the world to about to know about God Almighty. That is what really we're intended to be doing. Um, so that's the, that's the concept of the Kaddish. There's many more details on Kaddish, which are just really, really tremendously fascinating. And now that we're ready to da start davening, like we said before, <speaking in Hebrew> Call, so praise the name of uh, and call out the name of acknowledge God, his name, and uh, praise and, and proclaim God's praises among the nations. Now, then, then it continues on there. Then, then the davening continues with a constant flowing interchange of praising Hashem for his, uh, his greatness and praising Hashem for his kindness to the Jewish people and praising Hashem for his kindness to me and praising Hashem for how the nations are going to praise Hashem and for Hashem making sure that the nations that are off track are not going to, God forbid, 
cause any havoc in the world and um, praising the uh, that the creations are praising Hashem. So we don't have time to go through every single Pusik, but I encourage a person, I've, I've done this myself, when I daven, and it's possible to make the time for this, to choose, so to speak, a theme to look at every Pusik and davening through the eyes of that theme. So for example, one could be uh, Hashem's love for me. See how in every Pusik is bringing about an expression of how Hashem loves me. It could be how Hashem loves the Jewish people. A different theme. And, uh, for example, how Hashem takes care of everything I need. So then you fo- and then focus on the Pesukim and, and see how the Pesukim are, are explaining how Hashem provides the needs of every living creature. And this is, makes an incredible davening experience because you can see the, the, how really every Pesuk is, is coming to establish that point. So on that little note, I found it very helpful to spend a, a davening where I'm focused on seeing the nations, the, the, that the nations are going to praise Hashem. And that what Hashem is doing for us is to, ca- uh, is to bring about the Hashem's uh, praise among the nations. That is a davening unto itself and, and an incredible experience to be able to go through davening from beginning to end to see how our davening is built around that realization and that um, concept, not, not just a concept, that it's, it's meant to be a hope and a reality that the world is going to reach that. So... There's many, many uh, psukim here that go and continue to uh, talk about the um, effect on the nations and um, the uh, special merits and the special treatment that Hashem has given to the Jewish people to carry the, through history, that we should be the bearers of this light and, um, and, and carry Hashem's wisdom into the world. And proclaiming that Hashem is the king of all the nations. That all the um, other gods are, are really uh, nothing. And Hashem is the one who created the world. This is what the entire world is meant to recognize. Um, all the families and nations are coming to praise Hashem. Um, come and bow down to Hashem and, and praise Hashem. That all the the um, nations are going to be praising Hashem again. Many different words for praising. Um, the nations are going to say Hashem is the King. I mean, we're only only a few people came into davening already, and we could see how central it is to our experience in davening to this ex- recognition, this hopeful anticipation for all the nations. Recognizing Hashem. This is really what we're what we're teaching Shav Mitzvahs Ben Enoch to Chassidei Umas Elam. This is how they're going to be expressing themselves. This is what we're davening for every morning. That every morning when a Jew gets up and says these tefillahs, this is what, exactly what he's davening for. And if you you can make it real before your eyes in your own lifetime, right now, right here in this world, by teaching Shav Mitzvahs Ben Enoch to the non-Jews. Um, everything's going to be praising Hashem, the forest, the trees. And um, there's many, many different psukim here. And maybe one time it'd be interesting to come up with an addition of, of the t- siddur that like would mark these five different points and uh, sort of categorizations of the psukim so that you person could follow the flow because we don't have time at all to go through this, but it's really for everyone to really experience this and to discover this for themselves and see what they've been saying all this time and what, why, why they're saying this. Um, so, it, and just to, on the end of the Haidu section, it's interesting, an example is talking about that. It, it talks about, it. first the Pasuk says, the way, they, the way they, it's brought over here is first, I am the Lord, your God, that brought you out of Egypt. Open your mouths and I will fulfill it. And then it says, the next Pasuk is praising B'nai Yisrael. And the next Pasuk is talking about, um, I, I, me personally, I trusted in Hashem. And my heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord for all that he's given me. So you can see again the flow that the way it was, the feelings are put together, going on all these five different levels, interflowing together. So... Then we have Hashem Malach, Hashem Melach, Hashem Malach, Hashem Yilmach Ha'ilam Vod. And it says, this Pasuk we said at the end of Elenu, after proclaiming Hashem, the, the eternal king, 
that he is the king in the entire world. And, then, and when the redemption comes, when Mashiach comes, the Geula comes, that his name is going to be one that entire nations of the world are going to know Hashem. Um, then they have, the, again, all the souls of the world, all the breaths of the world are going to praise Hashem. Um, the, das, uh, the next one. You should you should show us the way of Shem Ladas Ba'aras Darkecha so the people should know your way, Pachol Goim Yeshuasach, all the nations should know your salvation. Yuduchamim Elokim Yuduchamim Kulam, that the nations should all acknowledge you and and they should everyone should be acknowledging you. Yismahu Rana Lu Umim, Kitishbat Amim Mishar Lu Um Bars Tan Hamsela. All these praises and, and the tremendous things that we're asking for that Hashem is going to do. And the rejoicing and acknowledgments of Hashem uh, is, is just so clear when you start reading this. This is, it, it's like, it, you know, when we daven and you hear a bird chirping outside, you could see that this bird is praising Hashem. And what all these tefillahs are bringing us to see is that we look, open the window, we go in our day and we see all these wonderful human beings that Hashem has created and to realize that with every breath that they're breathing, they are praising Hashem. Their existence is praising Hashem. And the more it's in line with their creative potential, it's more that it's in line with Hashem's creative intention for them. The more that it's in line with Hashem's creative vision for them, the more we will experience the peace in the world and the completion of the world, which is the coming of Mashiach. And we are the ones that are meant to be making them realize that they're breathing and the breathing is coming from Hashem. That is the gift that Hashem has given us with that incredibly, incredibly special mission. We say, Baruch um, and again, talks about Hashem's greatness, creating the world and so forth. And this is something that needs to be brought to the attention of all the nations of the world. Now, um, when we come over here, um, we see also the different points about the nations, the thoughts of mankind, that Hashem is the one that really establishes what's going to be. Um, he prevents the thoughts of the, the nations that have negative thoughts. Um, we have many, many thoughts swirling through our heads, but it's really the, the thought of Hashem, the idea of Hashem that is within us that stays constant and solid. Um, and has the ability to withstand all the momentary confusions. Um, we come then to Ashrei, and um, again, talking about Hashem is fulfilling the desires of all living creation. He fills uh, the, the needs of every single living creature. This is such an incredible, hopeful message to share with humanity. Um, Goes through the Halalukas, again, talking about um, lessons for everybody. Don't trust in people. I mean, obviously, this doesn't mean don't trust people, but I'm saying it means don't put your faith in people. Um, because a human being can't save you. Uh, this is a lesson for all humanity, that people should not become enslaved to other human beings by putting them on a pedestal and thinking that they're going to provide them the solutions. They're going to provide them the, the, the salvation from their own internal exile. The salvation from our internal exile is coming from God Almighty. Again, Hashem is the Asay Shemayim Ba'aretz, Asay Yom Ba'aretz, Asay Yom Hashem Emes La'elam. And the Hashem opens the eyes of the blind and he's straight bent over and loves the righteous and so forth. Now, then... Uh, we have more psukim over here. Some of the psukim go more to what Hashem has done and is going to do for B'nai Yisrael, but talks about the the um, the, um, the the natural order of things, the wind and the snow and so forth. And this is we we can get lost thinking it's the natural order thing, but we have to remember that it's all coming from Hashem. Every single detail of it. Um, then the next Tilam Haluka Halu Hashem Mina Shemaim Halu Bimumim Halu Kol Malachav All His Kings are going to praise Him Halu Kol Tzivav All the All the um, um, All 
all the um, all the hosts of the of the uh, of the nations, all the hosts are going to praise Hashem, and let me correct myself. I meant to say, let's go back. Let's go back. I meant to say that he, all his angels praise him, and all the hosts of the heavens, and then he goes and says the the sun and the moon, and all the stars, and it keeps going down until as we see over here that Hashem is going to be praised by all the great creatures in the earth, and then all the different mountains and the valleys and the fruits and so forth, and the animals and the kings of the land and all the people and all the ministers and all the judges, and all the, 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 the boys and all the girls and all the elders and all the young and so forth. This is the praise that all the nations of the world are going to be praising Hashem. Now the next um, parak is, is again goes to the special praises and, and thanks for the Jewish people. And then there's the last uh, capital of Tillam and of the 150 chapters of Tillam talks about the everything praising Hashem, all the instruments and all the people, all the creations and all, every soul is praising Hashem. Now, when we go into the Vayavarach David, um, we see over here, it's talking about, the, again, the greatness of Hashem, the special, that the Hashem is great, beyond any greatness that we can um, imagine, that, it, that all the rulership be, belongs to Hashem. And that we acknowledge Hashem and that we bless Hashem and that you alone have created, you alone, Hashem alone have created the heavens and the heavens of the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it and bring everything into life. And you brought Avraham, you, you chose Avraham and took him and brought him out of Urkastim to become Avraham. You took Avraham and took him to Avraham to become the Av Hamon Goim be the father of the masses of the nations. And you found this heart faithful in this service. And then it talks about the special covenant that Moshe, uh, sorry, that Hashem made with Avram and so forth. And it goes into the great um, experience of Kriyas Yamsuf where the Jewish people were taken out of Mitzrayim through the splitting of the sea. And that is one of the great miracles that was brought to the uh, world and affected the nations. We see over here in the Oz Yoshir the tremendous effect that it, it, it caused, not only an effect on the Egyptians, but it caused an effect on the nations in, in the other side of the Yam Suf in the, in the Eretz Yisrael and so forth. I once met a Gert Tzedek, and I asked him uh, what prompted him to choose to become a Jewish person. And he said, why, of course, Kriyas Yam Suf. And I was like, I, I had to like, I wasn't sure what to say, but he said it with such simplicity, like Kriyas Yamsuf, because in our day to day, we, we don't realize what effect Kriyas Yamsuf had on the nations of the world. This person, this human being became a Jew because he came to know about God splitting the sea for the Jewish people that they should leave Egypt. And then he was prompted to come into a, a, a relationship with his creator. Now that relationship with his, he could have chosen if his soul was one that was meant to remain a chassidic umas ilum. He could have still had an incredible service of God as as a chassidic umas ilum, and he felt felt especially called to become uh, uh, one of the one of the Jewish people through a, a conversion. But the point is that the impact it had on him, and the impact on the people that had at the time, and the impact that it continues to have, it's, it's still an event that reverberates around the entire creation. And then this whole section, after the whole amazing, incredible uh, shear that the Jewish people say at the end of the um, shir shayam, we again talk about the effect on the nations of the world. Ki lahashem hamlucha meishav agayim. Hashem is going to rule the um, is going to be the um, kingship is going to be for Hashem. He's going to rule over the nations, and specifically. And related to the Alu Moishim Bar Hatzion Lishpat Esav, he's Esav, the of Hashem Lucha, connected to this relationship with Esav, that Hashem is 
going to become and have, he already is the king of the world, but it's going to become revealed. That Hashem is going to be recognized, his name is going to be complete. There will no longer be any competing forces that make, not that they're actually separate from him, but right now they pretend that they're separate from him. They pretend that they somehow have some, some sort of independent value. So all this, that we've only done Pesukim this Zimra so far. So, then Yishtabach, talking about the great praises of Hashem. Okay, then we come to uh, Birkus Kriyashma. And the Birkus Kriyashma talks about the, the Hashem's greatness in the entire world and Hashem's greatness, the greatness of these angels that are praising Hashem, who's even so much unlimited, greater than Hashem. And then we come to Avas Elam that talks about the tremendous um, special love that Hashem has for the Jewish people. And the climax of all this is the proclamation of the Shema prayer. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Hero Israel, the, hero, the, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. So in the Pirish and Chumash, the Rashi explains this to mean that Hero Israel, the Lord right now is your God, because you as the Jewish people are the ones that have, are primarily aware of God. Hashem Echad, that in the times to come with the coming of Mashiach, God will be recognized as the God of all the nations, because through the effect of the Yidden and, and Mashiach teaching the nations of the world, it will make Hashem Echad, it will make Hashem's recognition of Hashem's oneness in the world. So the climax of our prayers to this point in time is this proclamation of God's unity and the proclamation that it will become one unity over the nations of the world. All the nations of the world are going to acknowledge and see this, the greatness of God Almighty. And that's really just incredible to see that this is the whole climax of our tefillahs is this proclamation of Hashem's oneness and his oneness that will be revealed over all the nations. Now, um, the tefillahs continue with the end of Shema and then the preparation for the end of the Bikas Krishma and the preparation for the um, coming to the silent Amida. And again, talks about the special kindness Hashem did to the Jewish people, taking us out of Egypt and so forth, so forth. Um, and Hashem's great kindness, how he takes a person who's even very, uh, who's bound up and, and will release them and so forth, and, and redeems the, the poor, and helps the people that are destitute, and answers the Jewish people at the time of their calling out to him. And this is the, the special praises of God. And then we come to stand before God in our own um, private prayer with God. And there's many things that can be dis discussed over here. Um, and we can go through it at a different time. Which of these tefillahs are applicable for the Chassidi uh, Umas Elam in terms of how a non Jew would daven? But what we, we see over here in these tefillahs is this is actually uh, the Jew is standing with and before his creator to ask him to have the ability to carry out this special mission because the special mission of being able to be an Orla Umim and be able to teach the nations. This is the content of prayer. And we can see that we don't have time to do it tonight, but Maybe even before Rosh Hashanah, we'll talk about the tefillahs of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that the, the special emphasis on asking God Almighty that he should cause the entire nation to recognize God and to call it to God, that is a special emphasis on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur because those are the emphasis of those days. But the tefillahs here and recognizing Hashem's greatness and his giving us wisdom and so forth and, and bringing us to his Torah, and that we can be one with Hashem and he sh we should be cleared of any type of things, thoughts in our mind that somehow we're separated from Hashem and he should give us the strength and he should heal us and he should give us the, the parnasa we need and he should take us back to Eretz Yisrael and he should return our sages to, and, and the judges to the beginning. What's all this coming to do? It's, if we were to realize all these things and we will realize all these things, and Hashem is giving them to us constantly, it's to give us the ability to be upright and able to be self-sustaining through our own contributions, that we can um, 
with the right das and so forth to be able to teach the nations of the world. Now, um, and obviously, I have to realize that when we say, for example, person person can get a little bit, side, you know, uh, think, oh well, I'm davening the Yerushalayim. I'm going to return. We're going to return to this holy city of Jerusalem. Anything that's going to be of benefit to the Jewish people is of benefit to the entire world. When we return return to Jerusalem. And, and rebuild the Holy Temple, that is a benefit to the entire world because we said already, this, this is the house of prayer of God's house of prayer for the entire nations of the world. So it's, we have to get out of the limited idea that somehow this is our just our own individual yearning. We are yearning for ourselves on behalf of humanity because in our returning to Eretz Yisrael and building the Mesa Vintage, we are fulfilling our role in the creation of the world and in regards to humanity. And we are bringing about the potential and the actuality that humanity will be able to serve Hashem fully. And that is what we are having in mind when we are when we're saying these tefillahs that we should be returned to Yerushalayim and that the, the Mashiach should come, the Messiah should come. This is what we're asking for. Now, one fascinating point over here in Shema Kolena, we ask Hashem to hear our prayers. And... Um, I'm interested if anyone has, there's a Sefer that explains all the diukim in uh, between the Alta Rebbe's, uh, Alta Rebbe's um, Siddur Tfila and other Nusachis, but in the um, in other versions of the prayer book, it says that uh, Hashem hears the prayers of, of the Jewish people. But the Alta Rebbe, specifically, the language says, Ki ata shamea tfilas kol peh. You hear the you God are hearing the prayers of every mouth because we will learn later that a non Jew has the obligation to pray for his needs, and God really listens to every prayer from every human being, and this is um, something that we have to remember, and that's unique about the Nusach, the way the Alta Rebbe uh, is teaching us that we should be looking at this. Um, then we're, again, we're talking about here the, the returning to um, the uh, service in the temple. Again, that's a benefit to the, all the nations of the world. Moidim, gratitude. Um, all of living things, they are going to praise you and acknowledge you forever, Hashem. And the Yehalu Shimcha Hagodol Elyon Kitov will praise you forever. Um, and that's, our, that's what we're thanking Hashem for and we're praising Hashem for. Um, now, Sim Shalom, I have to realize that when we are pale peace among ourselves, we actually accomplish creating peace among the nations of the world. Very, very um, important concept also. And so we dive in for peace. And obviously we want that there should be peace in the entire world, that all of humanity should dwell in peace. So then we come to Tachnun, which is our supplications. And we see over here, uh, particularly in the parts that we see in the Yom Sheni and Hamishi, a tremendous amount of emphasis and psukim about um, how we are waiting for Hashem, we're trusting Hashem and that Hashem should not let us seem to be just merely, uh, God forbid, um, taken advantage of by the, by the nations that are harsh and hostile. And on the contrary, Hashem should bring about the recognition of his name in the, in the entire universe <coughs> so that all of humanity serves Hashem. And this is something that... Um, is, is a, a key part of our Tachnan prayers and the way that we're supplicating with Hashem. Now, um, there's many more uh, points that we could deal with over here, but just to, to move along and, and we come to Uva Litzion, um, and again, talking about Hashem's praise, Hashem is going to rule forever. Um,
and then we come again to Kaddish. So um, the tefillahs of the Shir Shalyom, you could take a look at yourself. You see the impact on the nations through these different tefillahs. One of the interesting things over here in the part that we said before tefillahs Shir Shalyom says, um, okay, so this is Shlomo Melech's tefillah in, in the um, the establishment of the base of Mikdash. The whole sikum of Shlomo Melech's dedication of the temple is that in order that the nations of the world, all the peoples of the world, should know that Hashem hu halokim ein oid. There's nothing besides Hashem. This is the entire purpose of the Beis HaMikdash. Shlomo Melech is, is saying these incredible tefillahs on the, on the setting and building of the Holy Temple. And what he's saying is the whole purpose of it is that the nations of the world should know that there is only Hashem who Elohim, the Lord who is God, and there's nothing else. Ein Eid. That's what the bottom line of Shlomo Melech's tefillah is, and that's what we say um, every day on the days that we don't say Tachnan. We, we remind ourselves that. Now, we come after some of uh, the Enkelokeno the and so forth. And then we come to the Aleinu prayer. And the Aleinu prayer is attributed to Yeshua. And it is a prayer that is so important that we say it in every davening. We say it at a bris mila. And if even a person said it already, is about to say it, they have to stop whatever they're doing to say this prayer of Aleinu. And this is the ultimate completion of the davening, the prayer service with this concept of, of Aleinu. It's upon us, it's incumbent upon us to praise the master of everything. And it's very interesting. Someone uh, told me who's uh, in, in, in 770, said to me that it's very interesting in his own observation that the Rebbe davened uh, at a good pace through all of davening. And when the Rebbe came to Aleinu, he slowed down with special, special intention um, on the words of Aleinu. Because Aleinu is really uh, the, the, the highlight of davening. This is it. This is it. This is what we're talking about. This is what we started with. We started with the concept that are here, we're here to proclaim Hashem through the nations of the world. And we are ending our tefillahs as we're about to leave the synagogue. We're ending with this incredible prayer, asking Hashem to fulfill this and that we should see the reality of Hashem in the world and all the nations will know Hashem. So we start by saying we have to praise the creator of the uh, earth that uh, he has not made us like the people that are confused and lost and, and serving idols, but rather we bow and praise to him, to God Almighty, the King of all kings, the Holy One, blessed be he, uh, he sorry, the Holy One, that he is the Holy One, blessed be he, and um, he spreads out the entire heavens and earth and he, and he creates the, uh, puts the world on foundations. And he is, who he is, he is God, there's nothing else. And there's nothing besides the true our king and there's nothing besides him. And brings a Pasuk that says that you will know today and bring to your hearts that Hashem is the Lord uh, he is the king, the Lord, and in the heavens and the earth, and on the land, there's nothing else. Uh, therefore, we now we've got this established, what our relationship is with Hashem, the special um, appreciation for Hashem, and, and acknowledged who he is. Now we are hope, expressing our hope that we've been hoping for for thousands of years, that we will see quickly in the, the glory of Hashem's greatness, to take away all the falsehood, all the false ideologies, all the idols from the entire world, to fix the entire world, to establish the entire world in the, in the rulership of Hashem, 
and all the people of all the human beings are going to call out in your name, Hashem, to turn to you from all the any anything that's not good. Yakiru Viedu Kol They will recognize you. They will know you. All the inhabitants of the world, because to you they will bow every knee, and every person, every tongue will swear to you. Will swear in in in, in acknowledgement of Hashem that Hashem is the the only God and is the everything. The Fanecha Hashem Alakena Yichu Viyipulu. They will all uh, all the nations will bow and 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 prostrate themselves before you for the glory of your name. And everyone will, all human beings will accept upon themselves the, the yoke of your kingship. And you will rule over them speedily forever. Because the kingship is yours, God. And it is eternal. It with glory. Like it says in your Torah, Hashem will rule forever. And it says, Like we've said a number of times already, that your name will be one and everyone's going to recognize you as Hashem. Now, that's our davening. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's took me long, longer to explain this than the davening we do on a regular day, perhaps. But this is what, this is what the core of our davening is. And even Altira is telling us, we've just said this tremendous, tremendous hope and praise of Hashem and, and the hope that the recognition that all the nations are going to be serving Hashem. Don't get distracted. Don't get afraid from the wicked people that try to come up with conspiracies and plans to try to derail the Jewish people. That's not something we should be afraid of because we know that Hashem is the one that is making all this happen and it's for His glory that we are doing this. Now, um, that's the basic, that's the, that's the davening. Um, I, I think it's, I was going to point out that in Hishana, uh, Hishana Rabba and so forth, uh, and we can go through all the different Yom Tov and the davening, special in Yonam related to the non-Jewish people. But in, in Hishana is the special tefillahs that we say for, for all the days um, of Sukkot and, and Hishana Rabba davening for the well-being of the entire planet. And in particular, what's, what's incredible to note over here, is very similar to what we say every day by the Shur Shalyom, that at the end of this entire Heshana Rabbah, that we, we are praying for the entire world, there should be sustenance and there should be abundance and that there should be goodness in the world. Um, then we say, das kol ki Hashem hu ein oid. This is all again for the purpose. That and, and and even the salvation of the Jewish people is, and, and and the building of the base of Mikdash is for the, again from the Tefillah of Shlomo Melech that this is for the purpose of everyone should know that you are you are the Lord God and there is nothing besides God that's the purpose of all this and it's it's just very much mind blowing I would say to uh, see that in the uh, Hishana Rabbah Tefillahs that this is what we are coming to praise coming to do this entire video to come to that bottom line. So I hope that this has been um, inspiring as much as it inspires me to see more detail in my davening and more inspiration in my davening to recognize that what I'm davening for is when I'm getting up to daven is to recognize that I'm really making a proclamation to call the entire world to pray with me and to come to the same appreciation that I'm meant to have they should have the same amount of appreciation, the same gratitude, the same recognition of Hashem, same acknowledgement of Hashem, the same turning to Hashem when they have a need, that they will turn to the only one true source of everything, which is uh, the Lord our God. And this is the, the, what the tefillah, our prayer service, is meant to prepare us to that, for that, orient us to that. So that is what we go through the prayer service seeing as we go through the entire day seeing that when we look at the human beings around us, we interact with them, we interact with them as they, their potential is. You see, we can go, with, they always say now with, um, with children, right? You can look at a children based on how, a child, how, or any person, but just to, to, to now have an approach of, of um, 
of education of children, where you look and see what their reality is, what their real potential is, that's, that's what the Jewish people have always been doing. Because we start our day by focusing our minds on what the reality of humanity is. The reality of humanity is that it's good people. The reality of humanity is that, that it's, it's, um, these are people that are, are serving Hashem and praising Hashem with every breath. And when we go out and we look at every human being that way, that affects that they see that we see in them their greatness. We see in them their potential. We see in them their actuality. We're not in any way uh, distracted by what their appear outer appearance is. We see who they really are and the positive and the godliness that has been, is creating them. Then that has an effect on them. It has an effect on them when they're looked at that way because they see in our eyes that we see what, what we see in them. And how do we come to that level of being able to see this non-Jew and these non-Jews, the, the righteous Gentiles, the world's the Chassidic Umas Elam, how do we see them this way? And even the ones who are not yet the righteous Gentiles of the world, but rather are maybe lost in their own thoughts and, and conducting themselves for their, their confused thoughts and the ways that they conduct themselves through all kinds of unfortunate behaviors in their momentary confusion as to what their source is and to what their needs are, but we see who they really are, then we are able to, through the effect of our talking to them and the effect of our educating them, the effect of our looking at them in this positive way, we're able to affect them and change them. I'd like to conclude with a story on this note. Rav Mayor Greenberg, who was the, uh, the Rav of the city of Patterson, New Jersey. I heard from his son. One time he was walking and a, a young kid came up to him with a gun and robbed him at gunpoint. And uh, Mayor Greenberg looked at this boy and saw who he really was saw what he really is right now, that he is a human being created by God Almighty. And Rabbi Mayor Greenberg said to him, this is beneath you. You are greater than this. And that had an effect on that robber. A person was robbing him at gunpoint, literally walked away because of his words that came from a place of, of compassion and love and understanding that he was not judging this human being by the gun, he was not judging him by the color of his skin, he was not judging him by what neighborhood he lived in, he was not judging him by his behavior and how many people he robbed beforehand, he was not judging him at all. And in fact, love is the absence of judgment. He was able to see who he really was and he was able to speak to him on that level. And that affected the actions and the conduct of this human being. And that's what we're gifted through tefillah. When we daven, we are gifted with this insight into the true nature of humanity. And as a result of this insight, we have the outsight that we can see out into the world. We can see God's vision for the world in the world. And then we can interact with the world in that way. And when they see us looking at them that way and interacting with them that way, that is, has an, a, an incredible effect on, uh, on, on every human being because there's nothing greater than a human being to be looked in the eyes and know that the person who's looking at them knows that they're a good person, that no matter what's going on superficially, that they are really a good person. And when they see that, look in our eyes and they see the caring and the understanding and the patience to explain and, the, and the, the commitment to our creator and the commitment to God's creations that we're willing to spend the time and the energy and the heart and the soul to be able to explain to them with words that come from the heart that there is nothing besides God. And this God is a loving God of them and creating them and has given us the gift of, of, of the knowledge of this in the world, then that will transform the nations moment by moment, instant by instant, in an ever expanding, exponentially, uh, exponentially expanding way, in a way that we can't even measure or calculate or plan how fast this will transform the world. And that is what we daven for every day. And that is what we expect and look forward to with the coming of Mashiach Tzidkenu. It's not that 
we look forward to this happening when Mashiach comes. It is happening now, and we are causing it to happen now, and that is bringing Mashiach now. Thank mm-hmm. you.